It's Wednesday, July 25th. In case you didn't watch yesterday, the plague sweeping through our offices. Wendell's on his sixth or seventh strawberry candy. Oh yeah, sorry for the noise. So, <laughs> thankfully, Zerial Straw has sent us a five pound bag of strawberry candies as a joke for our Twitch anniversary. Oh my God, I didn't get sick until I started eating the candy that the oh. uh, Twitch streaming. Well, but, I ate the candy too though. Okay. And Krista didn't. Well, I do have a polonium sensitivity, so maybe. <laughs> halva. What did you think about the halva? It was weird, wasn't it? Was it was weird. It wasn't bad, though. I mean, it was, I, it was dry. I would probably eat it on toast for breakfast. It was like sugary sand. I don't think you could spread it. You don't think? I, mean, I think I, I could probably get it on toast. It was like extra dry toast. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and make an admission here. I get such a sense of glee. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I think anybody that watches the level one news would know that. <laughs> when it comes to crushing the dreams <laughs> of the EV fanboys. And boy, are they vocal. They've got a lot to say. <laughs> so I've, I've front loaded the Tesla stories. I'll admit it. <laughs> so maybe bad news Tesla will be the first automaker to lose the federal tax credit. There have been a lot of comments on this that is misinformation in our. Story. Right. The first Their one comments. is, it is not when you do the paperwork. It is when you take delivery of the vehicle. According to the IRS. So, every the Obama rules said you can get the full credit for 200,000 cars. Turns out Tesla has already at least, you know, done the paperwork for its 200,000th car. So, they're going to start tapering off into 2019. Well, it, you, you have to take delivery... The accord, the law has kicked in. So as long as you take delivery of your Tesla by December 31st, 2018, you get the full tax credit. But if Tesla can't give you your car before then, you don't take delivery of it, it's a problem. That's right. And as, at least as according to everything that we read online. And when it comes to the $35,000 Model 3, not likely. Not likely you're going to get that this year. So... You're going to miss out on the $75,000 tax credit. Well, or $7,500. Musk is still saying that they're ramp, like they're exponentially going to increase production, but he's been saying that for a long time. The big, uh, I didn't include it because it, it does seem like a non story, but the big thing this week was the, uh, did you see the, the drone footage of the parking lot? Hmm. There's a parking lot of just a sea of Teslas somewhere that they found. Hmm. And Tesla responded and said, that's just part of our like fulfillment supply chain. But a lot of people are like, well, if you, if you, if people are waiting for them, why are they sitting in this parking lot? Mm. So, but that might be true. I mean, they must all have some sort of terrible problem. Though that's the, you know, the short sellers are being like, yeah, it's because these are, what do they call that? It was like factory something. Didn't, I did not see that. This is one of the fallout video games. So like there was this quest in the, one of the fallout video games where like you had to, like go for Mr. House to like the robot factory and then like you activated all the robots. Maybe it's like that. The parking lot of all the Teslas. <laughs> you need the you need the poker chip or something to go activate all the Teslas. I don't think that would be good. It's combat vehicles. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Well, more bad news for Tesla. And this is not coming from me. This is coming from JP Morgan. <laughs> Tesla shares are going to plunge more than 40% before the end of the year. I, you know, I don't know. JP Morgan also, like, predicted Bitcoin or whatever. Maybe I I trust them so little after that silver debacle that yeah. it, makes, it makes me want to go buy Tesla shares. Well, forget silver debacle. How about the housing debacle? <laughs> they the, were a big part of that. The silver, the, like, the housing debacle was not super complicated, but it is sort of complicated. But with the silver thing, they were literally, like... Don't do this with silver. But then they themselves were doing this the, exactly what yeah. they told people not to do with silver, which is and hoarding, so dis- duplicitous. Hoarding the physical metal yeah. while destroying the paper prize. <laughs> you that, want to buy the certificates. You don't need the metal. <laughs> you want the metal. You're right that, you know, like, I'm no huge fan of Tesla, but I'm way less of a fan of J.P. Morgan. <laughs> so I'm not sure how to take this one. But they're saying that because of the, the money burn and because of the, you know, losing the rebate, and all these different factors, they're saying that Tesla's going to hit a wall. And one of the big parts of it is, and you, I kind of agree with this one, Tesla has been without a competitor for a very long time. And now we're seeing other electric vehicles that are going to start coming onto the market in 2019. I have seen a lot of very impressive stuff from Tesla in terms of like their battery technology. So the competitors may not really be there in terms of like the battery technology. 
but I don't think that Tesla has been adding innovation elsewhere in their vehicles. So I think their competition is catching up as much as anything. And those people already know how to make cars. Yeah. So you might get a nicer car from them. But who knows? Uh, I would not, we do not, you know, disclaimer, don't make any trades based on information that you get from the level one news. Because we don't know what the hell we're talking about. I'll tell you that right now. But, but I'm not a short. I do not hold any Tesla positions. <laughs> you have to always disclose if you do news about it. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have any Tesla stock either. So. <laughs> well, Germany. Germany is not waiting to take away your rebate. They're saying not only is there going to be no rebate. You've got to pay it back. you got to give your money back. I did not read this in my... Uh, my uh, well, know, twice warmed over yesterday's gravy state. It's uh, it's not black and white, and Tesla has responded. But who do you trust? So here's the deal: Germany had this deal where y- you could get this money back, but it had to be for a non-luxury version of an electric vehicle, right? I guess the the thought process is: if you're buying a sixty thousand dollar car, you don't need a tax rebate, right? Seems reasonable. So Tesla said, oh, don't worry. We've got this one version of the Model S that's like this base price. It it totally adheres to this thing. But then they would sort of like sell the customer the car. And then they were like, okay, now that that transaction is done, do you want to add on all these features that every car needs, you know? (laughs) And they didn't count that as part of the sticker price of the car. So the German government found out about that. And they were like, no, you're giving all that back. (laughs) But, I don't know how I feel about that. But Tesla has pledged they're going to pay all the they're yeah. going to pay all the stuff back. Well, that's a that's a pretty nice, it's a good of, way of dealing with goodwill. It. Yeah. But you know, imagine a future where cars actually are that modular. Because I, I know when I've gone to buy a car, and it's like you want how much for a DVD player or how much for you know uh, power windows? You guys are crazy. Yeah, in this case, it was like backup camera and uh, some of the automation package, which well, is can, literally just software. Yeah. So I don't understand why. And you can you could already have added that after the fact anyway for just the software. Yeah. So uh, they also claim that they are going to have an option package in Germany that will adhere without the trickery. Hmm. So going forward, people could still do it. Uh, Neat. Uh, Prime Day was last week. That was uh, it was a big story. I, do you remember how long it was actually down? I know at least 30 minutes, but I think they fixed it pretty quickly after that. It, honestly, it was super intermittent. I actually ordered a bunch of stuff, and I just hammered reload a bunch, and it was fine. I was also able to use um, Firebug to hide. Like, if you certain parts of the page wouldn't load, and when that certain part of the page wouldn't load, it would cause the whole page to spaz out. But if you just use Firebug tools to tell it don't load those pages, it was mostly around the affiliated and like related content, uh, you could go through the checkout process fine. You could also, uh, TechCrunch said you could use the smiles.amazon.com subdomain. Everything worked. Hmm. So I don't know if that was a DNS routing issue or what, but. I think probably the thing that did like the referral for like related products and other stuff, I think that was spazzing out because everything else hmm. worked fine. Didn't have an elegant failure in no. those parts of the page. So you might think, well, that must have screwed them. Like, like how much? How many sales do you lose in the first forty-five minutes <laughs> no. of Prime Day? And you Jeff know, Bezos laughed all the way to the bank. Yeah, terrible times. But it turns out, Jeff Bezos becomes the richest man in modern history. Now, you you might be saying, "Wait a minute, Jeff Bezos was already the richest man in the world." No, 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 not richest man in the world. Richest man in modern history. I think Bill Gates at one point was richer than Jeff Bezos has ever gotten to. And since gave away most of his money. But now, in modern history, no one has ever been richer than Jeff Bezos. So like all those steel barons that did all those terrible things and all that, <laughs> Jeff Bezos far exceeds them. I believe that's even adjusted for inflation. Wow. Which is incredible. Totally not Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> and this came on the back of Prime Day. It was actually a huge success. It was the biggest day of retail sales ever, or online sales ever. So... <laughs> yeah pretty incredible sort of crazy he needs to just buy a tesla and help it's like <laughs> <laughs> i don't think musk could ever handle that he couldn't give up control yeah that's probably true he couldn't handle having a boss i don't think i think musk is naive though that like if jeff bezos was lex luther that because i don't think i don't think musk is evil but i think that musk working for jeff bezos would see him as like 
a good guy and would work real hard for him. But Musk would have no idea that he's actually like building the machinery for World War Three or world domination or whatever. <laughs> well, there actually is a story about that. But I, yeah, he's not. I don't think. I think it's very rare that anybody sees themselves as evil. Like, yeah. I don't think Hitler saw himself as evil. <laughs> so, of course, Musk thinks he's doing the right thing. Speaking of people that don't think they're evil, let's talk about Facebook and, and Google, Google and Microsoft and Twitter. <laughs> This is, uh, I guess this is a good thing. I can't see too much wrong with this. I, the, the one thing I think is good about this is it lets the, the replacement for Facebook come into the world. Because you can transfer your data off the Facebook platform? Right. Think about it. Like right now, you can never compete with Facebook because everybody's got all their stuff on Facebook and all their friends are there and they've got all, they're invested into it. But now with this new project, you could pull your entire Facebook identity and I can, knowing what that data looks like, build an import for it on my website. So pro Fortune 500 deflection tip, what if building this facility allows you to deflect future Cambridge Analytica scandals in the future where it's like, hey, users elected to move their data off our platform. We had nothing to do with that. That's true. Yeah. And I think that is a big part of what this is doing. It's like they're fighting that. They're, they start, they're hearing those antitrust monopoly bells ringing, yeah. and they're doing anything they can to silence them. Yeah. So the idea here is you can pull your data off of any of these platforms and go to another platform. If Microsoft were to build a social media platform, and you're like, I love Microsoft, I want to go there, you can take all your existing stuff and move it over to there. This no to, problem. The, if you want... The, the last time this happened was the Microsoft Office file formats. So you should go read a quick summary of what happened when Microsoft opened up the Microsoft Office file formats. The short version is we still don't have anything that can correctly understand the Microsoft Office file formats other than Microsoft Office. <laughs> well, Uber, you know, we talked about Uber last time with their gender lawsuit. Another uh, thorn in their paw, you might say, is that New York has decided that Uber drivers are not contractors. They are employees, at least in terms of unemployment. Wow. But uh, Uber is not happy about that. Very, very unhappy about this. You know who's <laughs> ecstatic about it? Taxi unions. They're the ones who pretty much got this pushed through. But a couple of guys sued them. They lost. They got dismissed by Uber. They don't call it firing. It's just like removed from the network, I think is what they call it. And they were like, well, I'm unemployed now, so I should get unemployment insurance, right? And Uber says, no, you know, you weren't an employee, but New York has decided, yes, you will. Now, there's, a, there's an interesting nuance to this in that I think New York is one of the states that has underemployment laws. And so, like, if you have a full-time, I, I don't know, but it's, as I understand it, that uh, if you work for somewhere like Walmart or wherever and you work 40 hours a week and then they take you down to, like, 20 hours a week, but you need 40 hours a week to, to work, you can still apply for unemployment to make up the difference because you're working less than you expect. But with Uber, in a market like New York, do you think there's a constant ability to pull fares? Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Is like they, they may have opened Pandora's box with this ruling because, you know, during the non-busy times, there may be so many Uber, Uber drivers for, during the busy times that uh, it's not possible for all of the Uber drivers to get as much driving as they want. And that's kind of the appeal of Uber is that you can just turn it off whenever you want, but now you have to clock a certain amount of hours a week, I guess, to get to qualify for all these benefits. That sort of changes that dynamic. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, Uber is, of course, hoping to appeal it and fight it, and who knows, maybe we'll get another. <laughs> They're going to go the Amazon route and help people like get their own fleet of trucks and stuff. <laughs> that, that Amazon story from a couple of weeks ago is very, very related to this story where yeah. you, Amazon is like, we want independent owner operators for the, the fleet vehicles, but we don't want to open up this employment Pandora's box because you just, you can't make money. I mean, like if you could make, if you could do it algorithmically and pay the state and federal taxes and the appropriate amount of benefits and whatever, Amazon would be crazy not to do it. But the game for rubes that want to do this is that you can't actually reasonably employ people to do this. So you have to have them chasing a carrot. Well, speaking of Amazon, they've stricken fear 
into the hearts of all of their competitors. <laughs> and maybe number one among them is Walmart. And when you're Walmart, you need an online cloud presence and you need all this technology to try and catch up. Who do you go to? Well, you can't go to Amazon. <laughs> so Microsoft, they get Azure. Azure, I'm so sorry, Walmart. I am so sorry. <laughs> so they're going to be using uh, you know, Azure in the cloud and uh, they're going to be doing some other things to try and you know, gimmicky things, apps and so forth to get people to Walmart. They're going to be doing a uh, online shipping type deal. I think they're already doing that. So it could work. I mean, honestly, I don't know why Amazon or Amazon, I don't know why Walmart hasn't made better use of their delivery infrastructure because I mean, think about like Amazon five or 10 years ago. Walmart had better distribution centers, better logistics, better product handling, better like layaway and, you know, like service desk pickup, like online ordering pickup. How did Amazon screw this up? I mean, how did Walmart screw this up? Because they were ahead internally in every way. It just wasn't accessible to the public. See, I wonder if Walmart is trying to be something that they're not. Because, I mean, you think about Walmart, you think about a certain kind of customer. I think that's pretty obvious. Most people know that. And remember when McDonald's was like, yeah, we're going to get into these artisan burgers. That did not work out for them. No, because when you go to McDonald's, you're not looking for an artisan burger. And when you go to Walmart, you're not looking for a state-of-the-art shopping experience. You're looking for mountain lightning. <laughs> and In my case, I want to get in and out as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. So I think they need to cater more to their demographic. But I, maybe they don't see a future in that. I don't know. The BBC has a great story about Netflix. Yeah, Netflix, uh, I was thinking about this story when I was thinking about the, the Tesla thing because Netflix made 360 some million dollars this last earnings report, but they didn't grow. And when you don't grow, well, they did grow. They grew like 5 million, but that wasn't what was expected. And when that happens, people are just like, you're done. It's over. <laughs> so yeah, they lost uh, quite a bit of uh, stock value as they reported poor growth. Well, it couldn't have anything to do with the fact they raised prices, could it? I wonder about that. I, I've i noticed on Netflix that I'm kind of saturated right yeah. now. Like, I've watched everything I want to watch on Netflix, so I can easily turn it off for a month or two. They also have um, uh, multiple plans now. So, like, the family plan. Like, the regular plan is, like, you can have two streams at the same time, and, like, the family plan is, like, five, but then some of them are HD and... I, it's, I don't know what the rules are now. I'm just, I'm, I'm on the lowest plan. And They're like, like the, uh, the wireless carriers. Yeah. You know, they got the, all these confusing plans and it's just, it burns you out. But the, what the analysts are blaming it on is much like Tesla, Netflix has not had competitors so far. You know what would probably work for Netflix is like, if you could give Netflix extra money and if you didn't, you could use the extra money for like value add things. But if you didn't use anything, you could g put it toward like getting free, quote unquote, DVD box sets and things like that. So it's like, I haven't watched any Netflix or done anything for that. I've got, you know, 10 Netflix bucks. Oh, I could get the complete, you know, seven, <laughs> seven seasons of like Monk or something and they'll just mail it to me. And that's actually just their old mailer DVDs that they don't need anymore. Uh, they would eat through those pretty quickly, I think. And... It's, I, it's for the premium Netflix customers, so I mean. But I think the a lot of the people who <clears throat> sign up and forget about it are a big part of their I, revenue. I know somebody that um, they budget like eighty or ninety dollars a month for their is like their entertainment budget, and most of that goes towards like iTunes and Netflix and whatever. But it's like hard at like ninety bucks, and so they will cancel and uncancel Netflix, and then they'll like buy a season pass on iTunes, and then they'll buy like a DVD box set. And that actually works really well. Like I'm, I'm surprised at how much media that they're able to get access to on ninety dollars a month. That's Their a, media collection is very impressive. That's a lot of micromanagement, though. Yeah, yeah, it really is. You got to have time. We got to do an app to do that. <laughs> that would immediately get banned by every. Well, what if Netflix did it? Like Netflix is like, okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna partner with Amazon and actually just let you buy stuff if you don't watch a lot of stuff. So, are you saying like I could see it's a monthly fee? But then you pay like 99 cents per view. Yeah. And then if you don't use it, it the, rolls over. Yeah, it rolls over and accumulates. And they'll give you a discount on box sets and stuff that you can actually buy or downloads. So you can download this into not iTunes, obviously, because Apple's not going to play ball with that. 
Amazon could do that and let you build toward it when you take the, the cheap shipping. Yeah. Amazon should do that. Pro new business tip. <laughs> Pro Lex Luthor tip. <laughs> uh, well, one <clears throat> business thing that you might count on and may have built software that heavily relies on is going to be taken away from you, sadly. Oh, this Google Maps API BS is going to give me, like, I'm already sick. I'm just going to pass out on the floor over here. <laughs> they give you, so Google Maps is going on a, a pay plan, but they're going to give you $200 a month, which $200 a month for map API queries, that's pretty generous. But uh, there's a catch. There is a huge catch, which is always the catch when you sign up for free, right? Like, yeah. Everything where it's like, get three months for free and try it out. And you're like, yeah, that sounds good. And you get to a certain point, And what do they ask for? A credit card. So you have to have a credit card on file. Otherwise, you don't get an API key. But you get $200 of usage for free. But if you go over that, it builds your credit card. There's no option to just be like, I don't build. Just make, make my app stop working. I don't yeah. care. Which seems, I mean, that would be so easy to implement. I guess don't be evil. They're they're really taking the <laughs> abandonment of that very seriously. Yeah. So if you know that's one of those things where, let's say you've got a little blog somewhere and you've got a Google Map on it for whatever reason, and something you created goes viral, you might get a five thousand dollar bill from Google at the end of the month. <laughs> Can confirm as somebody who set up an experiment on like Azure or Amazon or something. It's like, I only want this to run for a day, and I, I didn't click the wrong thing. And then at the end of the month, it's like, oh, $700. That's cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's sad because Google Maps is such a convenient thing. And uh, you're going to have – maybe uh, I imagine you could get like a burner, like a prepaid card. It's, it's also worth mentioning that this year is the year that two or three Google Maps competitors that offered reasonably okay uh, API access to map data have gone out of business. It's funny because uh, on Zillow, because you know I'm always looking at houses, they use Bing. But if because one of the, the features that all the other real estate sites have is they'll let you plot directions from your workplace to your new house and how long that's going to take and you know all the details about the trip. Bing can't do directions, <laughs> so when you click the directions button on the Bing map, you go to Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, I should have put this next story with the other Amazon thing. I missed that. And also, yes, we realize this is probably not the best source for this news story. The World Socialist website. <laughs> <laughs> but the story is not so much to me about the, uh, the police attacking the strikers, which probably did happen. I don't have trouble believing that in Spain. But that on Prime Day, there was a concerted strike at the Amazon factories in, uh, in Europe. Spain, I think it was all across Europe, wasn't it? Like yes. Germany had yep, some? Yep, yep, Well, in Spain, they got beat up. The police just beat the crap out of them. Yeah. Because in Spain, the economy's real bad, and it's like you don't do anything to mess with the economy. <laughs> right, yeah. So they were escorting the uh, the scabs to and from so that the strikers couldn't mess with them, and eventually they got bored of that and just beat them savagely. So, yeah. It's, uh, you know, you, you read so much about how bad things are at Amazon. But my initial response to that is don't work at Amazon. Right. And I guess some people are in Spain. You might not have a choice. Yeah. And the economy is real bad and they probably moved some warehouses there for that reason. But still, mm, I don't know. They want a lot of, or actually they're fighting. Amazon is so powerful in Spain. Cause you, you know, again, the economy is crap. They were able to do, uh, let's look at the list of things. It's, it's pretty, uh, horrific what they're doing lower wage increases no more pay increases based on seniority 25 percent reduction in sick pay two-tier wage system for new hires and cuts to overtime for extraordinary hours including holiday and night shifts we don't we don't have a story about it but this has been the trend like this is one of the hallmarks of like a collapsing economy because um there was a there was a story another story about some people that work at a company donating their paid time off to another coworker for maternity leave. And it's like, those are not feel good stories. Those are stories about how your society has failed <laughs> and probably corrective action needs to be taken. And so like these, these stories are people should not have to live under these conditions. But at the same time, I have three prime packages coming tomorrow. <laughs> they so, damn well better get here. Yeah. So I can't really take the high road here because 
I'm going to shop with Amazon because it's so convenient. And I don't want to deal with people. I need yeah, my packages. It's such a good experience. And, you know, there might be a little blood on those boots that are bringing me my packages, but I sure like getting those packages. But. I'm going to make tea and crumpets for my UPS man. <laughs> well, you, the, the, the warehouse people are the ones who are really suffering. Don't care. I think UPS has a pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, UPS is pretty good for Myers. Which is why Amazon is trying to do the <laughs> yeah. the, the contractors. <laughs> this story, uh, this, this story amazed me, and I maybe I, they seem like they got a good response. I don't know, but the Washington Post, and here we go with our Amazon. If you didn't know, Washington Post owned by Bezos, the history's, why not? history's richest man, and uh, so the Washington Post. Where are they going for their new audience? Twitch. Well, I would believe that streaming on Twitch would net them more money than newspaper subscriptions. Like, that's believable. <laughs> you think people would donate to the Washington Post on Twitch? I think so. Subscribe? I mean, uh, it's it's the new Washington Post for, you know, millennials in this generation. I don't know. Well, the millennials are, like, the Washington Post is very lefty. And the millennials seem to be, you know, primarily left-leaning so i guess it's covering the news they want to hear now the really dangerous situation that we get into is not that that but when the washington post decides to run a story that is say inflammatory or a little bit of an echo chamber the people that are into that kind of an echo chamber are probably going to throw lots of bits at the washington post and that's uh, maybe going to create a a, a dangerous uh, feedback loop that will certainly make them you know the confirmation bias yeah once you can directly monetize confirmation bias it's going to be that's going to be nothing but it ends badly there's going to be like a, a 24 hour stream of just trump jokes <laughs> yeah and they'll, they will make millions of dollars from it <laughs> well i'll tell you who's not going to make well they'll make millions of dollars but maybe not the number of millions that they had hoped and that's comcast because they've been beaten by Disney. A certain mouse. Disney's this, acquiring Fox. Like Thanos is acquiring Infinity Stones. Ah. Except there's just one. <laughs> no, Disney's acquired a lot of other stuff the last couple of years. Oh, that's true. And uh, Fox. Now, I thought they had already gotten the Fox assets, but I, I don't understand. It, cause Comcast people, stepped in at the last second and was like, but wait, there's more. And so Disney had to up mm -hmm. their bid. And they did. And uh, 71 billion. That's quite a bit. They don't get Fox News or Fox Business. I'm not, I think they get, do get sports. And nothing of value was lost. So if they get Fox Sports, that's going to be ESPN and Fox Sports under the same umbrella. <laughs> Somebody's going away. ESPN 8, the Ocho. So yeah, that's uh, make room for more stuff at uh, Disney. I, had, I only cursed for this was a Krista story, I think. Did you add this one? No, I did not add this. Yeah. I really I thought this belonged to the nonsense section. I don't I don't WeWork is apparently I had to look this up. They're a company that rents out space. Uh, like so you can co working space? I think it's sort of like, you know, on demand workspace. So if you're like a contractor or something and you just need some place to go that's got internet access and air conditioning, then you can sort of just like dial up some space and then they'll they'll manage that. This story did make me angrier than it like I was like, why am I so angry about this? <laughs> well, they're playing to the pandering to the base, and so they're getting rid of meat. You're not allowed to have vending machines with any meat products. They're not catering meat in the buildings. It's a red meat, red meat, pork, and poultry. It's all meat, yeah. Uh, they didn't say anything about fish. Oh, that's true. Well, fish is kind of a borderline thing. I can't think that you get. Is there any vending machine that has fish in it? <laughs> <laughs> there are vending machines that have sushi. Really? You get the little packages of sushi. Oh, <laughs> I would not trust that. It's like, it's like truck stop egg salad sandwich. It's like you roll the dice a little bit, but yeah. heavily weighted dice. <laughs> I wouldn't go for that. Anyway, you end up like this. They're anti meat, and you can't you can't have meat in any of their workplaces. We got we got a lot of gaming news this week. Yeah, we do, and uh, starting out. Valve, Merciless, has banned 90,000 Steam accounts because of VAC. These are the VAC bans. These are the unappealable bans. Right, yeah, it's just over. <clears throat> and the fact that they banned 90,000 makes me think that they haven't been doing their job for a very, very long time. Well, I think this that is, seems like a lot. They kind of do that. They do them in waves. Because I think what happens is after they do a, a wave of bans, 
the people who are using the software that got banned know that that's a bannable software now and they stop using it. I only know of one VAC ban that was reversed and it was uh, one of the engineers for VMware. And it was like one of the machines that he was working on something on and Valve was like, no, this is terrible. He's like, I'm a VMware engineer. That's why I have this. And they were like, oh, okay. So yeah, be careful. Uh, Counter-Strike, Rust has it. Uh, Dota 2, I think, has it. There's a handful of games with the VAC system on Steam and uh, don't cheat because they'll catch you. Battlegrounds has BattleEye, which is not effective. <laughs> it's certainly not. Uh, maybe they should look into VAC. I don't know. It doesn't seem like they want to spend money on their product anymore because no. they're like, it's we're dead. only making tens of millions, man. <laughs> we should be making hundreds. <laughs> well, Amazon, again, another Amazon story. So Amazon's got the third-party sellers, and you'll, you'll have a bad experience with some third-party sellers one time. I was looking at uh, replacement batteries for my fob for my car. Oh, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, and I read like two or three reviews, and they're like, yeah, they opened this and put a dead battery in it and shipped it to me. So I was like, oh, okay. I'll go to Meyer and get that. But this is kind of that same situation. In this case, somebody bought a GOG version of this game. Good, good old, old games. games. Which doesn't have DRM. Yeah. Which is great. Good job, GOG. They did. Now, the GOG has the GOG installer, though. So you know if you bought it from GOG. Well, these ne'er do wells built their own installer, but they left a lot of the traces of the GOG stuff there. This was a half assed scam. But it worked. They sold this. Uh, what was the name of this game? Frost. Frostpunk. Yeah. And some other games for $3 instead of 30 So they just totally ripped everybody off. Yeah. Now, in. Frostpunk, what this developer, I can't remember what developer this is, 11-Bit Studios, they, in their defense, are going to honor these games. Wow. And they're actually going to try to figure out a way for these people to get a legit version wow. of the game. That's good, good on them, but yeah. that's not like <clears throat> this. Actions like that are especially damaging to the gaming community. And we in the gaming community should do whatever we can to track down that person and make sure that they go to court or stand trial or whatever. Because it adds fuel to the argument for game companies to put really super egregious DRM in their games. And GOG is one of the very few companies that, you know, it's not DRM, it trusts the user, it's very good. But when you do this kind of egregious piracy abuse, it should be grounds for the electric chair. Yeah, the cool thing about GOG is if it's DRM, they just don't sell it. Yeah. You have to agree to have just an installer. They've got their own little Steam-like thing, but you don't have to use it. It takes a special kind of evil to abuse that. For $3 a copy, too, that's they couldn't have made much. Good news is it was quickly caught. As soon as somebody brought the the attention to from the 11-bit people, they contacted Amazon. It was taken down quickly. They have to know where that money went, so yeah. I'm sure that'll be turned over to law enforcement. God, and, I hope so. Well, yeah. String them up by his toes. Speaking <laughs> of game studios that maybe a lot of people thought should be strung up by their toes <laughs> or possibly other extremities. No Man's Sky was back in the news this week. <laughs> They've actually... Actu well, I don't know if anybody's seen it in, in play yet, but Dying. they claim... Don't trust it. Full multiplayer. Don't trust it. I don't believe it. Some other uh, features, space fleets and freighters and bigger bases and, and so forth. So that stuff that we were promised at launch is coming <laughs> two years later? They're also going to launch the game for uh, consoles. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So. Well played. I don't know. I mean, we're often pretty desperate for games to play on Twitch. Because. <laughs> we'll revisit it. Because we don't know what to play. But uh, yeah, will we? I don't know. Maybe we will. Oh, this news is delightful. This this one definitely belonged in nonsense. <laughs> well, it's social media, so I, I think uh, is it, it's not nonsense though because it's it's something that should have happened and did. Well, Although the, it's nonsense that it took this long. Yes, it's definitely nonsense that it took this long. So if you haven't seen this channel, you remember the Daddy O Five channel? It's now Family of Five. If you haven't seen that, like you probably should just not go watch it. Well, you can't now. Well, I'm sure that there's archives of it somewhere online. Yeah, but, but this is this is this really represents the worst of humanity. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of it or seen it, it was a family with five children. Well, now three. I think they should be banned from YouTube just for that. Two of the children were taken away for these videos. Yeah. So they had some older kids and some younger kids, and for the most part, they pranked the younger kids because they were 
easy to prank. Prank in the sense of like jackass, the, the, the TV <laughs> series. Well, a lot of it was, uh, there was some physical abuse, but mostly just mental abuse. Like accusing a five-year-old of something that he didn't do and not accepting his, that you know he didn't his do. plea that he was innocent and telling that he was going to be in trouble. And watching a five-year-old just descend into tears and be completely crushed because he's innocent and he's being subjected to a punishment. And then after five minutes of that, being like, oh, it's just a joke. <laughs> just a, and then putting that on YouTube. Like, that's what we're dealing with. Is, those kids are going to be serial killers. And can we blame them when they are? You know, I think probably they'll just go to crack. But even then, I'm not sure that we can hold it against them necessarily. <laughs> and of course, the YouTube algorithm is like, you'll probably like this. It's like. <laughs> but yeah, they're off YouTube. Oh, I've clicked. I've clicked a thing. <laughs> we almost made it through the episode without the ads getting in the way. Oh. Well, I can read the... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here oh, the British Airways story. Man, you guys should have already seen this because this was everywhere. British Airways, like, so GDPR, right? Like, protecting people's data? Oh, man. <laughs> well, they. this is a two-pronged assault on GDPR. Two... Horrible things. One, which I think they, they knew they were doing and were trying to get away with. And one was just some Twitter person being an absolute moron. <laughs> so what tipped this guy off to contact British Air on Twitter was he found he could not submit his uh, airline information. Because like he, GDPR. He was trying to reserve something on a flight and it wouldn't submit so he was a developer, and he started looking into it. And I was like, hey, look at all these things that are being blocked by my ad blocker. So he turned that off, and he submitted, and it worked. And the reason was because British Airways was sharing marketing data with so many companies that are known to be you know, tracking you that his ad blocker was blocking the trackers. And you can't reserve a flight unless you allow yourself to be tracked. It's not in the text or anything. But just the way the website works, you can't do it. <laughs> well, the web developers in the audience just uh, puckered their uh, <laughs> little bit. Yeah, it's bad. It's so, real bad. So that's strike one. That's bad. So he contacts Twitter, British Airways Twitter, and he's like, hey, look what I found. And their response was, can you reply with your passport number and your, you know, all of your personal information and your address and your payment info <laughs> and they didn't say direct message they just said reply with so then he looked in their history and he saw that that was their that's how they did it that was their mo and people were replying in public view with all this information <laughs> and they said you have to do that because gdpr <laughs> i mean what can you say about that <laughs> That's a level of stupid that makes me want to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even the cold medicine. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. It's, the browser's <laughs> it's, it's on its last legs. We, we'll get through two, three more stories. <laughs> Facebook in the case of the Crimson Hexagon. It reads like an Arthur Conan Doyle novel. Yeah, the Crimson Hexagon. Like, <coughs> How do you think they came up with that name? I think that it was probably like... Uh, uh, Palantir. It's like kind of a nod to the evilness mm, of their corporation. Suppose, but yeah. Crimson Hexagon sounds like kind of like a death metal band, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So this was this was a government agency or government. Well, not a government agency. They worked they, with the government agency. Yeah, they had contracts from them, and they had access to the data. It worked differently than the Cambridge Analytica data, but they maybe had access to data they shouldn't have. It was similar, yeah. But what Facebook has discovered that this data was being used by the government. I discovered. They probably already knew, right? <laughs> but it also turns out these guys had a similar deal with uh, Twitter, what Twitter calls the fire hose. It's like the fire hose of the metadata that you can get if you have a partnership with them. And this, I think Facebook stopped this or noticed that something might be wrong because of the I stuff. Yeah. Because a lot of these agencies are using this metadata to try to find the undocumented people. It's a... Uh it, this is just suspended pending investigation, but it's not actually shut down completely. So they may turn it back on. But it does show that 
Cambridge like things are still going on at Facebook. Yes. And enough that internally they're getting scared. Yeah. And looking really hard at some of these. Well, Zuck was back in the news this week again just because he was he was interviewed somewhere or something and it was like, you know, who do we blame for this? Who do we blame? And at first it sounded like he was going to have a very mature response for that. He's like, you know, this is this is a systemic thing. That's you know, we, these features are sort of built into the platform. And then they were like, well, you know, who should be fired? And he finally just said, well, if anybody's going to be fired, it should be me. And the interviewer followed up with, okay, you should be fired. Are you going to fire yourself? And he said, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes, I don't think he will. No. Well, I mean, it's it, this is the closest that he's come, I think, in this what has been published about this interview to saying – Literally, what we've been saying since day one of the scandal, which is Facebook was literally designed to do exactly what happened here. How hard is that to understand? And if you're a shareholder, that's what you expect. Yeah. Because that's the only way the company's going to make money. Yeah. So, Motherboard also got its hands on some juicy, delicious, leaked documents regarding Facebook. Yeah, this is... Uh, so, we've always known that Facebook will turn off your group page or shut down your account or whatever if you do certain things. But it was always kind of up in the air. The big, uh, another, the interview that we just talked about, one of the big things from that was the uh, Holocaust denial thing. Yeah. So they talked about, it's like, well, what if someone is a Holocaust denier on Facebook? And his response was, well, I, you know, I don't think they're doing it maliciously or I think they believe what they're saying or whatever. So we're just going to de-emphasize it. Which means it wouldn't market. be a bannable offense and people yeah. got real upset about that. So this document kind of lays out where the line is in terms of when to turn things off. And like, well, sexual nudity type stuff, you get, I think, two strikes. For political fake news, you get nine <laughs> in a 30-day period. And they've just got all these arbitrary rules about how much is too much of each offense, which is interesting. It is worth a look if you're interested in things going on that platform. If you're in marketing, you should definitely take a look at this because it tells you exactly what you can get away with. <laughs> yeah, you think that the the fake news people will adjust yes. their algorithms? It's like, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna post fake news on Monday, and then Tuesday through Thursday it's just gonna be fluff pieces, and then Friday we're gonna hit two fake newses, we're gonna hit hard on Friday, and then we'll wait till the next Tuesday again. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna start adopting a strategy. Patton Oswalt, I think, did this originally in 2013, where he he would tweet something, and then. That was the it was one of two tweets, and so like he would set something up in the first tweet, and then the second tweet taken by itself was like the most highly offensive thing ever. Like it was insane how offensive it was. But the first tweet was like, I would never say something like, and then the next thing is, you know, Hitler did nothing wrong or whatever. And uh, that that has been an hilarious experiment because a lot of people are catching the second tweet, but not realizing the context of the first tweet that sets it up for the second tweet. And so I think the fake news people will probably adopt the same strategy just from reading this motherboard article. I think that still gets you a strike though. Yeah. Well, but it's not, you could argue that it wasn't intentional, but it was, it was totally intentional. I mean, not really, I don't know, satire. I don't know how you, well, Facebook doesn't have the character limit, so yeah. it's harder to, it's harder to justify to that. that. Yeah, Pat, Pat and Oswald did. I mean, he did it with like within the character limits and everything. It was brilliant. Oh, the browser just crashed, but luckily that was our last story. So we don't need it. It's going to be tough to do the one tab now. That's the end of the level one news for Wednesday. And gosh, we're, we are really slow getting the news out, but it's okay. Cause I'm dying. Yeah. And coming up on Friday, we got a healthy dose of nonsense on Friday. We've also got security and did we do AI yet? I don't yeah, think we, we did. Did we do it? Did we do robots? Yeah, we did. No, did we? I don't know. It I don't know. Maybe AI and robots. I, it's, I've, I've lost count. But we'll see Friday. It'll be something quality. So check us out.